Hello, good morning. Welcome to Yesterday Today for Thursday the 21st of February. One of the best things about making this podcast is I now know the date every day of the week, which is something I never used to be able to say I could do, to be honest. Today, we're going to go back to the Norfolk News in 1903. And I find dealing with old newspapers, you sort of you get used to reading about daily stories of misogyny. But here's one that, despite all that, still managed to put me back. Grandmotherly legislation in America. Considerable discussion has been provoked among New York women, says the New York correspondent of the leader, by the bill introduced by Assemblyman Phillips of Albany to restrict the length of ladies' hat pins to three inches. He declares that the present hat pins are dangerous weapons in the hands of women who are growing daily more and more neurasthenic and hysterical. New York Women's Protective League has given utterance to bitter protest and hints that Phillips has been subsidised by a patent hat fastener company. Yeah, I think he probably might have been. I don't think even in 1903, surely that didn't fly when he stood up and proposed that bill. Anyway, we'll move on from blatant misogyny to a bit of light-hearted fun because the Norfolk News isn't just any old newspaper, it's a paper that just so happens to have a joke corner. So here's one of the best from 1903. Bus driver to calm a van in front which is blocking the way. Get on, get on, you've been keeping us waiting five minutes. Van driver turning around. Five minutes? Well that ain't so long. You had to wait five years once, didn't you? Now if anyone understands that, then please let me know because... Does it, <laughs> just put him to shake I don't know. What a time to be alive, eh? Rather unpleasant. Mr James Parrott of Goxhill, near Barton-on-Humber, a farmer and machine owner, told the local magistrates of an exceedingly unpleasant encounter with the burglar in the small hours of Friday morning. The man opened the interview by shooting him through his left arm on the staircase and then compelled him by threats to show him all of his money and valuables, down to his children's money boxes. Refreshments were the next order, and Mr Parrott, despite the heavy score he owed him, proved so hospitable that his visitor was subsequently taken quietly into custody in a state of helpless intoxication. Now that is an astounding effort on behalf of Mr Parrott. It's a proper long game right there. The Norfolk News... Not only does it have a joke column, it has a news in a nutshell column, which I'm fairly certain is not meant to be satire, because one of the stories is about a man who commits suicide by standing in front of a train. So I'm fairly sure it's, it's, you know, serious. Uh, Amongst stories like The Suicide Man are these useful little nuggets of news. Professor Momsen, who recently met with an accident by setting fire to his hair, was on Tuesday knocked down by a cab. Thrushes have nested and laid eggs already at Martham near Yarmouth. Twelve persons have died of old age during the past fortnight in Stepney. At Bolton, Miss Irene Stevens, the daughter of a vicar, has been fined two shillings sixpence for striking a tramway car conductor three times in the face. She stated that he refused to give her a penny instead of two half pennies and then tried to trip her as she was leaving the car. <laughs> it's always quite um, interesting, and you find stories in these old newspapers concerning sort of laws or bylaws or legislation, which you assume they probably didn't last very long, and they always seem to be sort of knee-jerk responses to something that's happening at the time. And this is a stellar example of one that I sort of hoped was a knee-jerk. Frederick Reed, licensed fixture, was summoned on the information of Superintendent Reed with permitting drunkenness on his licensed premises. Three boars at Spooner Row, Windermum, on the 28th of January. This case arose out of the previous one. Defendant, sworn, said the charge was a false one and that the man was not drunk. He walked out of his house without assistance. Defendant said Riseborough had not been in his house an hour and it had not served him anything. What beer he had was what others had given him. Now that is mind-boggling. So, Frederick Reed's a a licensed pub owner, 
and he gets taken to court for allowing one of his customers to get drunk. <laughs> now that's not only a law that I never knew existed, but it's one that I never even considered that it might exist. But do you know what's really amazing? Is that I look this up, and it still exists today. It's section 12 of the Licensing Act, 1872, and it outlaws every person found drunk in any highway or other public place, whether a building or not, or on any licensed premises. So there you go. Now, I knew it was illegal to serve anyone in a pub if they were, like, really hammered. Just from... I mean, I worked in a pub when I was a student, but I, I think that's a law that most people know. But I didn't know you weren't, you literally weren't allowed to be drunk in a pub. Full stop. It boggles the mind, doesn't it? And on that note, that was yesterday. This is today. Have a good one. Except from don't get drunk anywhere. <laughs>